What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so today I wanted to take a moment to talk about increasing our productivity and using a specific feature in Studio One to do that, and that is storing an instrument plus effects preset. We'll talk about what it is, why it's useful, and why in some cases it might be the better option to use as opposed to just storing a basic preset. So let's drag in an instance of Easy Drummer. When writing and when doing writing sessions or production sessions, it's a really good idea to have some templates or some basic presets that are a good starting point for when you write. If we take a look at Easy Drummer, for example, if I just wanted to have a basic stereo file, this would be completely fine. It's loaded a basic modern kit. It sounds great. The mix sounds good right out of the box, but if you need any more flexibility, we have to customize this. So some things that I might consider doing would be, first of all, I can tell you that this is going to be much too loud in terms of how I like to work. So one thing that I would do, actually, first of all, let me put a new gen limiter on my main outs just so I don't clip. One thing that I would do is I would select multiple channels, for example, all of these, and I would probably bring this down by like, you know, six or seven or eight dB. This would be a better starting point for me to work with. And then if we take a verse and bring it in and I was to play it. Okay, so we've got some headroom left. So this is a little bit better. I might even bring these down further. But another thing that I would do is I would take a look at setting up discrete routing for all of these different outputs. So for example, the snare, the hats, the toms, all of these different outputs over here, I would want to route these to a multi-track out within Easy Drummer. And then of course we'd need to come into Studio One and we'd need to enable those multi-outs. So this is already a lot of steps that I'm having to take to get me to the starting point of where I want my virtual instrument to load and how I want everything to look. And then one more thing is I don't want to have Easy One, Easy Two, I want to have the actual names. So I'm going to have Kick, I'm going to have snare, all of hats, all of toms, et cetera, et cetera. So in the time that I've spent making all these adjustments to get this to the point that I want it to be when I'm starting my work, this has taken me out of the moment quite a bit. And that creativity could have already gone and passed at this point. So how do we solve this issue? Well, we can solve this by creating presets and templates and using stuff like import song data, those types of options. But I want to focus on one area in particular. So let's just remove this track. And I've got another song prepared where I have this set up exactly as I want. So I've already set up my multi-outs. If we go to the mixer, you can see everything's multi-out. I've brought down the levels to be what I consider to be a reasonable gain staging for the way that I like to work. In addition, I've named all of my channels in the console. On top of that, I've also done some basic EQ just using the Studio One Stock Pro EQ. And in this case, I'm actually using the new Fat Channel uh, Series 3 plugins. And I've done some additional processing in terms of compression and EQ on my mic. Now, once it's at this level, this is what I would consider to be a really, really good starting point in terms of working with Easy Drummer in a writing session. But of course, this can apply to any virtual instrument that you're working with. This just happens to be a really good example. Also take note that I've changed the actual name of the instrument in the instrument rack. So it used to say Easy Drummer. I've got to say Easy D Basic Kit. So this is the way that I want Easy Drummer to come up in a basic writing song for maybe pop, just a singer-songwriter capacity. So let's head over to our virtual instrument GUI. We will click this little icon and let's store a preset. Let's call this basic writing kit and I wanna put this in a subfolder. I'm gonna say MH Music. Okay, so we've stored the basic preset. Now what I wanna do is let's store an instrument plus effects preset. And again, we can leave this as the same name because it's actually a different file format so it won't conflict. It's gonna be in the same subfolder. Okay, so now we have these two presets in Easy Drummer. All right, now let's move over to a blank song. So we have our blank song again. This time, let's drag Easy Drummer in, and we know we've saved a preset, so let's first load the basic preset that we created. Keep in mind, we did a bunch of work when we created that preset. So it loads, and it doesn't quite look as we expected. So for example, it has all the multi-outs routed, which is great. And I have the level adjustment that I've done to the mixer, but I would still need to come in and enable all these multi-outs. Now, the minute I start enabling them, we have the same issue over here where our 
channel names don't match. So we don't have kick, snare, hats, and everything. So we've already done that work, and we don't want that to be conflicting in any way. We want to just be able to use that as a starting point. And keep in mind, we also had plugins that we had set up in our basic writing template. So let's remove track and instrument. Now this time, let's just grab the preset from the actual browser. Let's drag the instrument plus effects preset in. So I'm going to drag this in. Watch what happens here. Okay, now we're talking. This is exactly how we set it up. So we have the Easy Drummer basic kit, the custom name that we created. In addition, we have our gain staging. We have all of our multi-outs. All of the multi-outs are actually set up in the virtual instrument. In addition, we have all of the plugins. We have any adjustments that we've made. So for example, this one had an equalizer and a fat channel compressor. And also it has all of the custom names that I gave in my channel. So this to me, is a much more useful form because it can contain lots of information. It will contain channel names that are custom. It can contain plugin and effects change that you've added. And in addition, all the multi-out routing, everything makes sense. And this is a great place to be in terms of a starting point. So moral of the story, if you're using certain virtual instruments in writing sessions, you're using them quite a bit, you have your own way that you like to set things up. Maybe you have some custom naming structures and things that are put in place that work for the way that you like to produce. This is a really, really great option to use. And it's something that's kind of a little bit convoluted. And I know a lot of people would ask me, hey, what's the difference between these two? This is the main difference. It can contain a lot of information that's really useful. Let's go back to our main song for a moment here. And I wanna just kind of drive home why I think this is so important. Let's say I'm doing a writing session and I've programmed my drums or recorded some MIDI and using a keyboard or something like that. When it comes time to either mixing or moving on to additional production, tracking vocals, whatever the case may be, we could leave this as a virtual instrument if we want, but we also have some other cool options with Studio One. So for example, I could use the export stems option and I could export all these channels. They're already named properly because we named them. I could just delete the file name prefix. We could now export these and load them into our song. Now I have audio versions of my drums. So for example, if I mute this, I have my drums printed as audio. This is really, really useful. Uh, another thing that we could do is that if I wanted to use the track transforms options, we can transform our tracks as well. So we can render all of these channels. We'll click OK. And as most of you know, Studio One will create a hybrid type of file that has the rendered audio, but in addition to that, it also has the note data or the MIDI information in each of the files as well. So if we do any edits, this will all be retained and put back in place. So now the instrument has been removed. We're looking at straight audio. Now one little tip I'll give you here is if you want your names to match, all we have to do is double click and choose Shift Enter. So we double click the name, Shift Enter, and that will rename all of the events on your track according to what they are named over here. So now we have like a perfect setup where I was able to have one track for really quick and easy programming, and we have two awesome options that we can use to render the discrete stems so that I could move on. And of course, at any given point in time, if I wanted to transform this back to an instrument track, we can use that option. And now we're back to our starting point. So instrument plus effects presets, a really awesome option to use in place of a basic preset because it retains so much information. And I find myself creating instrument plus effects presets for all of my writing templates. It's a great place to start, really helps with my productivity. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you found this video useful. If you do, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.